Hi, I'm Shannon Giordano, Director of Marketing for Fertility Planet. This session is about stress and how it impacts your life and your ability to get pregnant. We're joined today by Kristen Darcy and CEO of Fertility Planet, Karen Thayer, to lead us through this discussion. Thank you to our attendees for joining us, and please share your views and questions with us via the chat functionality or at, on Twitter at, at fertilityplanet.com. Also, go to fertilityplanet.com anytime to find information about speakers and to book appointments with any of them. We'd love to hear from you. Now, it's my pleasure to introduce you to Karen Thayer, CEO of Fertility Planet, who will kick things off with Kristen Darcy. Kristen is going to be sharing with us survivals, strategies for survival, balancing infertility, marriage, and life. Hello, I'm Karen Thayer. I'm the founder and CEO of Fertility Planet. Very excited to be talking with Kristen today. Kristen and I have known each other for a couple of years now. Um, but Kristen, I would love to just hear in more detail kind of uh, how you discovered that you were going to be um, having an issue with your own fertility. Can you just tell me about the moment when you when you first realized that there was that there was an issue? Hi, Karen and Shannon. Thank you so much for having uh, me with you today. It's an honor. Um, and yes, I would love to share. Uh, I think my story is similar to a lot of women that you know you and I have met along uh, our uh, intent of hoping and helping other people. Uh, I was 22. I started my own preschool. I had a staff of 28 amazing ladies and took care of 51 beautiful children every day. And for me, it was nirvana. And then um, never had an inkling that it would be an issue for me to start my family. And uh, when the time came for me to do that, it just didn't happen. You know, the months ticked away into years. And then uh, we entered that high, you know, reproductive endocrinologist office and uh, entered into the land of fertility treatments. So I, I think uh, way back when, because my son is now uh, turning 17, I can't believe it, it was such a different environment. You know, now fertility is really an industry. And I think um, for the cycle for me, it came out of nowhere because, you know, you weren't grown, you know, we're, we're, we weren't raised that, you know, you, that song, you, you love marriage and then you have a baby in the baby carriage. You know, there was no talking between your parents or, or your mom about if you can't get pregnant, you need to see a reproductive endocrinologist, you know, right away. Or So that was my story. It was almost, you know, every day surrounded by children but not able to uh, do what was so natural for so, uh, so many other people. And so when you when you realized that you, that you had that you were going to be sort of coming up against an obstacle, um, it's it's so hard to talk about. But uh, I know that now you're in the process of helping a lot of people, kind of with kind of conflicts or issues or tensions that might come up in a marriage or a partnership, mm -hmm. as as you sort of begin to realize that you know the pregnancy just isn't happening. Um, now I'm a single parent by choice. So I perhaps didn't face some of the issues that you did, but I am wondering kind of. How um, how how realizing that there that, that this wasn't going to be easy? How did that impact the marriage or the relationship? And and how did you kind of begin to cope with that? Well, I think for me and for what I focus on within uh, my presentations and coaching, it's really the sense of falling out of your love with yourself and what you need to be doing for self-care first so that you are uh, grounded and able to uh, you know put your energy and feed that space in between your partner so um, I think for me it was really coming to terms of what work I needed to do on myself you know Karen in in my discussion with clients you you fall into a state of um, almost panic you know and that is an organic reaction that the body does when you're under stress and so when you have uh, you know you're brought into this arena that you really aren't prepared for it's like going into a, a different country you know not knowing the language or the terminology so what do you do you do pre planning right if you're going to take a trip so what can you do to create systems within yourself so that you create resilience and the resilience needs to be encompass everything because I'm sure you you went through your personal journey but 
uh, that touched every part of your being, right? Your work, your friends, your family, you know, your personal being. And so what you, what I focus on for the emotional resilience is simple, easy tips that you can do to create stability for yourself, which ripples out into every aspect of your life. Right. So what would be some of those suggestions? So, um, and I, I imagine, because I know that in my own arc with, with, with trying to have a child, there were all these various phases, and I know in each phase I sort of had different types of falling out of love with myself. As I think that's a really interesting um, way of describing it because that really feels quite accurate to me. Okay. So sort of as you first discover that infer that fertility is going to be an issue, sort of what do you say to yourself? Then when you're sort of in the thick of it and things look like it's just really not going to happen, and then maybe. You know, I, I think another interesting part of my own arc was then actually falling pregnant at last, miraculously. Um, there were a whole bunch of fears and concerns sort of around that first trimester for me as well. So I guess I wonder sort of what you would recommend would be good tips for maybe those three different chapters. Well, the way I address that is really uh, before, during, and after care. Because what I have found too, and you're so spot on with it, Karen, is that you have different needs during the different cycle. You know, it's the bell curve of this. And, and the aftercare part of um, women who have experienced fertility and come to the other end, they are now in the quote unquote organic natural cycles of what your body does after childbirth, and you're feeling typical normal feelings and then you feel bad for feeling those because you've waited so long to be pregnant or be in the family that now you're slipping back into another arc of you know transitioning into motherhood and so what that for me what that is is to acknowledge your feelings without judgment of self and realize regardless what situation you're in you make that feeling of stress, no matter how it appears in your body or it appears in your emotional body or how you get the inkling of, oh my goodness, I feel stress. Our, our natural recourse is to push it away, to exile it, and to say, I can't feel that. I'm not justified in that feeling. We're going to push that away. But what that does is exile it, right? And then you have to put so much energy into not feeling that feeling that it grows. It's almost as if, for me, it was a different personality that came on board when I was that uh, uh, myopically focused woman about getting pregnant. And you know what? I have this cool little picture here, and I don't know if we can see it, and we can put that up later. But this is the picture of our brain, right? And so we have these great, this is our beautiful brain. And the reaction of the brain is organic and natural, and it, it needs to be just acknowledged. So here we are. Here's our brain. The corpus callosum collects, connects the two parts of the brain. And what ends up happening when you get into that, sh that stressful feeling, which is natural and, and doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing your body, you have this amygdala that is like the alarm center. Ah, something's wrong. Something's wrong. And it's triggered. So the most important thing that you can do when you become aware of your stress is, is take a moment, take a deep breath, and ask yourself, you know, self-questioning. Uh, uh, I'm feeling blank. I need blank. And then the simplest way to stop the cycle is to jot it down. Answer those two questions. I feel blank. I need blank. And what that does is goes back to the little picture of the brain, it triggers both sides of the brain. So your, your fight or flight side of the brain is taken over. There's no logic. It's I'm in stress. I'm never going to get pregnant. I used to call it the, the, you know, the drive the bus right into, um, you know, nutty town. You know, what happens if my numbers aren't right? What happens if I don't get pregnant? What happens if my embryos don't grow? And, and all those what ifs. And then if you're just aware of that and say, thank you, thank you, I'm doing what I should be doing, but what do I really need? And what, you know, what do I feel and what do I need? It's just profound. It's really just being friends with yourself without judgment. What would be sort of an example of that? Because 
I have to say that uh, that sounds great, mm -hmm. but I find that when when in the moment, when faced with sort of um, in, in, in an argument with your partner or with your husband, I mean, what do you do in that moment when things are escalating, um, you're not feeling good, you're not feeling good about what's coming out of your mouth, you're certainly not appreciating what's coming out of his mouth, how do you sort of in the midst of sort of a blame fest, do you, do you sort of turn things around? You know, Karen, that goes back to those two questions, and it's really your responsibility to be aware of yourself, and even in those moments, and so what you do in those moments, and it is a self-awareness, and, and also being curious about your partner. Um, you know, I call it putting down the hot potato. Just because someone throws you a grenade, like, no, you can just do this now, or no, I want that now, doesn't mean you have to react in the same way because what is so amazing about our brain uh, is that we have mirror neurons. So what you need to know is if you're in an exchange just like you said and maybe your partner isn't capable right now to be self-checking, self-regulating, self-managing their own state, then you manage yours. And what is so cool about our brains, there's statistical data, there's studies about this, that when someone raises their voice or cries or does whatever it is that you're mentioning that you brought up, you do the exact opposite because it's modeling. And your brain will trigger, ding, 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 okay. And so it's, it's that same, um, you're mirroring to the other person what you want to have happen. So if you're, if just say an example, if you're aggressive towards me and I come back aggressive at you, we're mirroring each other. But if you do the opposite of what you want that calms down the situation, then, then it is um, magical. The other thing is to really call it out. I'm triggered right now and I'm walking away. You know, one of the things that I was taught as an early childhood teacher, and you know, there's that book, Everything I Need to Know About Life, I learned in kindergarten, but the strategies uh, about teaching these little beings how to be in the world are so applicable even in any any situation. You know what? If you're not able to manage your state and you're having a moment, you have a right to have a moment. But you don't have the right to project that on somebody else. And just calling it out. I have had clients within couple coaching sessions say, okay, I'm really triggered right now. That's nothing to do with you, but I'm triggered. And that's giving your state uh, a script, you know, have a script between your partner, I'm triggered, or, you know, a red flag phrase, you know, whatever it is between the two of you to, to de-escalate. But it really comes back to you. It comes back to your ability to self-regulate. Can you tell me a little bit more about the types of clients that you're seeing right now? Sort of, um, do, you, do you have sessions that are mostly one-to-one, -one, or do you do them in groups? So what, what happens normally is we, I do a group session and then I have one-on-one -on -one clients. But what is so amazing now, the change of what is happening, and I am so uh, excited about that, is the, the influx of men really looking for coaching and really looking for, uh, to, begin the pro to begin this process of an awareness of how they can support their, their wives in, in the manner that they need. And what I have, or it, it doesn't even mean, you know, men supporting, it could be in the same uh, sex marriage or, um, but I've noticed a change in, in how people are seeking assistance. And so that has changed, in the, you know, I've been around for a while, Karen. <laughs> so, so I was interesting, I was talking to another friend of mine who's a co coach, and I said, within the last month, February, the, the calls coming in were from men, saying, I really want to support my wife more through this journey, can you help me? And it, it's, I think it's because there's so much openness within this journey and uh, the stigma, you know, especially for male fertility, is changing and that goes to the shout out to all these amazing you know Eric Sadaka I mean Mark, Mark Sadaka um, you know Greg Wolf all the books that have been written about the male journey. Kristen we have a question from one of our um, attendees and she's asking if you have a short mantra or meditation or visualization we can use when we're feeling particularly overwhelmed. 
So um, what is so powerful? And um, I, I actually, we were just talking about within the support groups about the IVF uh, retrieval socks. And what is so important about um, this journey, what ends up happening is that you get disconnected from your body. You know, at the beginning of this conversation, we talked about being in love with ourselves or falling out of love with ourselves. And then within this natural progression of trying to create a child, it becomes this private act in this very public arena, right? So there's a disconnection. So how do you get that sense of being in your body and feeling grounded? And it's so simple, easy. This is what I use all the time and actually, you know, treat, teach my clients and also my children. So if you just sat very comfortably in your chair, lowered your shoulders, have your feet firmly on the ground, and imagine above your crown, you know, above, above your head right here. And this is so amazing because right behind me is Kuan Yin, and she's the goddess of mercy and compassion. And this med quick little meditation is, is, is being watched over by her. You can see her above my head. And it's about really compassion, you know, sitting comfortably in your chair, your feet grounded on, on the earth. Feel Mother Earth with your toes. And close your eyes and deep breathe, you know, breathe in, breathe in. Allow the image of the divine white light to come down into your lotus flower, down, just like you were taking a shower, but this is the divine energy, the connection from above. And it washes over all your chakra, your, you know, your third eye, your throat, your heart, your sacral, your root, all the way down, all the way down your legs, and it puddles around your feet, down into your earth star. Imagine that there's a star underneath your feet that connects you to the earth and all the way, all the way down into the, the core of Mother Earth, and then back up. So well, I remember when I started, and all the way back, the, the Mother Earth energy comes up, 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 all your chakras out, and flows over upwards like a fountain. I remember when I was learning to meditate and beginning my practice of yoga, and I, I would be that, I'm the type A woman, you know, I can't sit and meditate, you know, I'd be thinking grocery shopping and all those things that you need to do, and, you know, you think you have to be posed, but that is a, a beautiful meditation, it really is, and you can add a mantra of, I am love, I am love, I am love, mm -hmm. very simple. I like it, thank you. Um, let's see here. Are there any other questions from our audience today? Shannon, do you have a question you might like to ask? Kristen, a little more about, um, and I know you talked about getting out of that, that um, circle of uh, the, the negative energy. If you and your partner are going back and forth, are there simple breathing things that you do as well in those mantras that you talked about, grounding yourself to the earth? Like, Is there something physical that I can do that can change the energy? Well, it's it's immediate to go straight to your breath. You know, we that's constant, and 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 all you can do is just take a moment, real quick, a second. Imagine, you know, just do what I said. Ground yourself to Mother Earth. Connect upward, and then just breathe in and say, "I breathe in love, and I breathe out stress." And then you can do another cycle. I breathe in love. I breathe out peace. I am peace, and so. Once again, it's it's really trial and error what works for you and what's best for you. And I think for the ownership piece of you are truly only responsible for yourself and, and what you need to keep yourself grounded. I was like Cinderella when I first started my journey. I was going to yoga, you know, I was running around. I was going to yoga, craniosacral, I was doing acupuncture, you know, I was doing, you know, uh, ch uh, um, Chinese herbs and, you know, you name it. I, I, I adapted that type A personality to a holistic approach of me, you know, and, and it didn't work, obviously, at the end, you know, but it has to be more of, you know, I'm open to trying these things, and if this doesn't work, it doesn't resonate with you, you know, just, just keep, keep with it. Um, so it would be really being focused on your breath, and all you really can do, too, is just put your hand on your heart and breathe in and breathe out. You don't have to add a mantra. You don't have to do anything. That brings you right down you know, right to your core, right to your soul, and, and settles yourself down. Kristen, Thank you so much. Thank you, Karen and Kristen. We're just about out of time here, but we really appreciate you spending time with our audience. Thank you to our audience, too, for joining us. You can learn more about Kristen and about Karen and book appointments with our experts by going to fertilityplanet.com. 
You can also watch videos of this webinar and other webinars and our um, event sessions on the Fertility web, uh, website for free. Please continue to share your views. Continue to, the conversation with Kristen on her partner channel, Kristen Darcy Coach on FertilityPlanet.com and with us on Twitter and Facebook as well. We would love to hear from you. And I'll finish this session with sharing all of the ways that you can contact Kristen.